Welcome to The Lisa Show. I'm Lisa Valentine Clark. And I am Richie T. Are you struggling to be on the same page as your partner? Well, coming up in 20 minutes, we're going to share some advice on establishing healthy communication patterns. And you know how every day is a national holiday and with the internet (laughs) we celebrate some, you know, just new and interesting things? Yeah. I think that the permission has gone too far. Oh, no. We are celebrating a holiday... (laughs) I I don't even know that it's actually a holiday, except that, sure enough, on my calendar, it's a holiday today. Have we gone too far? We'll talk about it coming up in your morning buzz. If you care about succeeding at your job, conversation with other employees can feel like wasted time. You could be spending getting more done. And I think this is an interesting idea because I do feel like there are two camps of people, right? Mm. Some people that work that think that the connections and the conversations that they have at work will enrich their their productivity and their job and and how they feel about the work they do and those who think I I I just need to get some stuff done. Yeah. There there are those people in this office that we call Lisa, those who like to make connections <laughs> and make friends with everyone and those who <laughs> like to come to work and just work the time that they're at work and then leave and those are Richie people. Well, I wasn't going to say that, but since you did, it's okay that we have differences and knowing that we want to be respectful of everyone's perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Work is isn't social hour and connecting with your colleagues is actually proven, though, to help improve your work ethic and performance. So it's not like we can put it aside. It can really help your company work together as a stronger unit. Yeah. So how can we make friends or even just improve our relationships with our colleagues at work? Well, to help us out, we've invited Dr. Agbanyam, an industrial organizational psychology practitioner and best-selling author, onto the show. Welcome, Dr. Agbanyam. Thank you very much, Richie and Lisa. Great to be here. We appreciate your time. And I think that a, a great place to start is to, when we're talking about colleagues and, and, and making friends and how it affects our work productivity, why is it that sometimes we avoid making friends with our colleagues when in a different social situation we wouldn't? Thank you for that question. I I do I do believe that the reason why we do that is because the work environment is so structured, is is so uh, designed uh, in a way that we're supposed to act like robots. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we are <laughs> we are so instructed on what to do that we forget that we are humans first before we become you know employees or, or employers. Mm-hmm. So for that reason. We have to get back to humanity by knowing that every day, that every day that we wake up, we have a contribution to make, and you can work at your maximum capacity when you are basically under pretense. You know, let me go to work and behave this way, that way I can get paid. But when you draw the humanity out of you, hmm. you can actually be more productive. Well, I, I'm encouraged by this idea and this uh, humanity and connection. And certainly recently we've felt disconnected be, due to the pandemic. And, and we can all, I think, collectively feel that sort of sigh of relief of thinking, oh, yeah, I have missed those connections. So I think it's important for us to review the benefits of of having friends at work. What are some that you've identified? Yes, having a friend at work is a very healthy uh, way to start. Uh, like, I, I, like I always say, each and every one of us, we bring to the workplace uh, the software that we, that we were introduced into, for example, the experiences that we have. So what would make the experience rich is if we allow each other to exist or each other to express their own perspectives in terms of uh, whatever they bring to the table. So the benefits of bringing your own experience to work mm-hmm. is that we'll, we will exercise that very humanity that I'm talking about mm-hmm. without me being, uh, you know, sugarcoating or pretending to be, to be what I'm not. Yeah. So the benefit of exercising friendship in the, in the workplace is it makes it humanizes the environment, mm-hmm. you know, reminding us that uh, we are first human before we are co-workers, and humanity does not have any kind of boundaries. For example, you don't 
stop being human when you go when you go to work. Yeah. You are human at home, you are human at work, and you are human in your social setting. So the benefit of it is very rich, and it has a spillover effect. So, some spillover of this, effect. yeah. Some Go of ahead. this is our uh, is our own choice, right? If we how we act in the workplace, we come in and and we choose whether we socially interact with with our colleagues mm-hmm. or our peers in the office. But I think that some of this is sort of top down. If expectation is there's an almost unachievable amount of work that needs to be placed that to take any sort of time away from being on task would make you be behind or have to stay later or not be able to meet the goals. How much of this is the responsibility of the employer? Well, again, um, I'm not here to, you know, budge any, any party here. <laughs> My job is to, uh, you know, to present the two parts and then, you know, discuss both parts. Both parts. Number one, the only thing that separates the employer and the employee, okay, is the title. Mm-hmm. Outside of that title, he, the person is just a human being. So if we come to work with that mindset, without carrying around the titles, the bottom line is, what is the work to be done? Is a big question. Mm-hmm. If everybody in the in the in the space understand what what the work is, then nobody should be policed or yeah. should be overly supervised <laughs> to do what they know. So the question, the big question, is what is the work to be done? And this question goes both to the for the employees and for the employers. Once it's defined, the rest of them can play itself out. But unfortunately, most of the time is role ambiguity, yeah. where we don't know what we're supposed to do or when we're supposed to do it, because it was not well explained. Then we find ourselves in this quandrum, you know, called uh, workplace stress. If that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're just joining in the conversation, we're talking with Dr. Abraniam about uh, connecting in the workplace. Um, and we've sort of talked on the on the shallow side of, of individuals coming to work and not making connections in the yeah. workplace. But I would think there's another side of this conversation with those people who come – to to work and are you know it's every bit of their social connection that it's more of, of that oh, sure. uh, you know social hour or or being able to hang out how how do we find an and great uh, uh, and um, institute great boundaries on that side of things you sort of talk about the ambiguity and I would think that would affect that side of the socialization as well 